so the other night we were doing something i think we were eating dinner and um my older son he pointed to a, a light bulb that we have just hanging from our ceiling because we don't have a lamp yet we moved into a new apartment and we haven't bought any any hanging lamps anyway there was a there was a fly flying around the lamp and uh he said, Dad, Dad, look at that, look at that uh, fly, look at how it's flying. Can you please tell me why it's flying like that? <clears throat> and I, I've seen flies, you know, fly in circles around lamps so many times. Um, as I recall, I, I just have never thought about it the way I did the, the other night. And it was because uh, my older son, he pointed uh, to that fly and asked me about it. So I want to encourage you next time you see a fly flying around a, a lamp, um, look at it and and let me know if your fly was flying the same as my fly was flying. This fly was flying in a in a weird shape. Uh, I used to use an example of a fly now uh, when I explain um, centripetal force and when I talk about circular motion. Um, moving in a, in a circular path or oval path, going around something. Uh, but I'm not going to be using it anymore because I, looking at this one, maybe I shouldn't disregard this um, example just from one observation of one fly. Um, anyway, so what I saw was that the fly was not really flying in a circular path. The fly was flying in a path um, it looked like a polygon so it was going straight and then changed into another straight path uh, you know kind of like a hexagon or octagon or decagon basically it wasn't going in a smooth circle it was jerking and each time between each jerk it was flying at a, at a straight path maybe probably at a constant velocity um, for a motion in a circle to happen um, or any time an object is changing its velocity, uh, it is accelerating. Now, imagine something going in a circle, uh, let's say a, a car driving around uh, around something in a circular path at a constant speed. So it's not changing its speed, but it's constantly changing its velocity uh, because velocity is direction and speed. So as long as you're changing just the direction, uh, you're still changing your velocity. And as as long as you're changing velocity, you have to be accelerating. That's what acceleration is. It is a rate, how fast you're changing your velocity. And if acceleration is present, if an object is accelerating, there has to be some force acting on it. According to Newton's second law of motion, if the net force that's acting on an object is zero, then the acceleration of the object is zero. And as soon as the in the numerator that, that net force is not zero term, and of course, the mass in the denominator is not zero. Then a non-zero number divided by a non-zero number is not a zero number. And so there has to be acceleration. And the acceleration has the same direction as the force that provided the acceleration. And if you investigate some of these examples of circular motion, for example, here is a, here is a picture of a, of a car going in a circular path. Um, sorry for how the car is looking. It's a very rudimentary box car. Uh, the black over here, those are right here those are the wheels of the car so one and two two wheels and of course the the road is turning like this and so you would you would turn your your wheels you know into the into the curve and what's happening is basically is that the car the car's tires touching the ground push the road and they push it in the direction showed by the, these green arrows in here and the road's reaction is that the road pushes the car back, you know, equally strong in the opposite direction. So the red arrows are the reaction reaction force of the road. And if you look at the direction of the reaction force on the car, so the green is the car pushing on the road, because the road is not going anywhere. And the red arrows are the force with which the road is pushing the car. And as you can see, the direction is into the center of the curvature of that of that. Um, of that curve that the car is taking. And it is this red force, the road pushing on the car, the friction force between the tires and the road, uh, that provides the centripetal force, the center seeking force, which pushes which changes the direction of the car. Uh, if you if the if the road was icy, 
and there was no friction. So, in other words, if the car could not push the road, and the road could not push, not push the car, and sometimes this happens that you're driving on an icy road and you turn your wheels, and the car doesn't turn, the car continues to move forward um, because that center seeking force is just not there. And anytime anything is going in a circle, there has to be this, this force pushing it toward the center of the circle, changing the velocity, is great, giving the car the acceleration, and uh, or giving anything the acceleration. So when you're swimming, um, uh, recall how, how it is when you swim that you, that you make yourself go in a circle. Well, you have to push basically off of what? In this case, off of the, the water. So you push the water, let's say, if I want you to go like this, I would, with this hand as I'm swimming, I would basically push stronger than, than with this one over here. Uh, an aeroplane pushes itself off of the air, the molecules of air. Um, you know, an aeroplane, if it flies above the atmosphere, there will be nothing to push off of. And so the wings become pointless. That's why you no know, rockets don't have wings. Uh, when you're up in space, you don't turn the same way that you turn here, where you can push off of something to provide that centripetal force. And I always thought, I always thought that flies do the same thing. So when a fly is going in a circle around the lamp, that basically it flaps with one wing faster than with the other. Uh, kind of like when I'm swimming, I either, you know, push faster with this hand or I strong, do it more strongly. Um, and I, I thought that the flies were doing the same thing and so they, they could make it a smooth circle. But this one observation, it, it seems like flies don't fly like that in a circle. They basically make an octagonal path, at least <clears throat> when making these large circles. Now, I saw a video, I'll, I'll post a link here, or I'll show you a piece of that video where a fly is doing a, an evasive maneuver and can change, it can change its direction in a, you know, a hair of a second, a split second. And uh, from the slow motion video, it looks like the fly is not changing. It, it, it seems like it cannot fly with one wing faster than with the other. It can, it can definitely change the angles uh, of the wings, but it seems like it's not that it's flapping faster. Um, and, and so I really don't know, but the fly definitely can change direction. It can definitely smoothly do so. On a very small, uh, it can make a circle a very, very small radius smoothly. But for some reason, I think maybe perhaps it chooses because it's easier to fly that way when it's flying in a large circle. Instead of going in a smooth large circle, it just flies straight. And then it changes the direction slightly and again flies straight. Maybe it's lazy, I don't know. And then it flies straight again. And so it's making this polygonal path. So seriously, these fly searing muscles are about the width of a human hair. And we can now see their movements in 3D and study them. And if you're asking yourself, why would I want to study those? Well, Anthony and I will drop some brain gold on you. This is the brain gold sign. I just learned it. A fly's flight system can perform acrobatic maneuvers more complicated than anything man-made. So the more we know about how they work, the smaller, simpler, and more intelligent our flying machines get. Also, more fly-shaped. They could get more fly shaped, which is the best, mm. like bug eye flight goggles, enough said. Flies are basically cooler looking than anything we have in the sky right now anyway. I mean, have you seen helicopters? Next time there's a fly um, flying around your lamp, please take a look at it. Um, maybe um, take a video of it. I definitely will do the same thing and then post it and, and write a comment down here uh, underneath the video. Let me know how, you know, how the fly that you see flying around the lamp flies. Um, so that I, I would have more data and we could uh, discuss this more. But it's definitely fascinating.